I'm Matt McClure. And I'm Francesca Maxime, and this is Currents. Life at the mall, in a way you've probably never imagined. It's been more than a passing glance. When people stop, they stop and they spend some time there. Is there an afterlife for pets? His answers may surprise you. In the beginning, before the sin of Adam and Eve, all creatures seem to be happy with God, in harmony with God. And a race where everyone who competes is a winner. Well, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us on this Columbus Day evening. We're almost halfway through the month of October, which is also known as Respect Life Month. So tonight, we're taking a look at life issues from a number of different angles. We start with a special mass at St. James Cathedral in downtown Brooklyn a little more than just a week ago. The occasion, Respect Life Sunday. <laughs> here at St. James Cathedral Basilica in the borough of Brooklyn, which is the cathedral church of the Diocese of Brooklyn. We just celebrated the Celebrate uh, Life Mass, that is an annual event here in the diocese, in which we do two things. First, we highlight uh, the importance of the respect for the dignity of the human person, which is a, a monthly, an annual event in the month of October. And we also celebrated Mass today with Bishop Cisneros and honored uh, the Joint Parish Respect Life Committee, which is a group of uh, dedicated people from different parishes throughout the diocese who have dedicated their time and their ministry and their energy uh, to working for a greater respect for human life uh, throughout society, from womb to tomb. They work against abortion and euthanasia, and they really work to spread the gospel of life throughout our diocese and throughout our nation. The Joint Parish Respect Life Committee is uh, very grateful and very happy that the uh, Diocese of Brooklyn, the Office of Faith Formation, is recognizing the work of the committee. The individual members are longtime advocates for Respect Life work. And uh, since I retired, this has been uh, my primary vocation. Uh, we've done a lot of work. Uh, we do have uh, a publication, Respect Life News. We also sponsor a Catholic speaker series. And our latest uh, effort has been to uh, promote the Senegals of Life prayer groups. We know that we can't get any place without um, a whole lot of prayers, and particularly in the adverse uh, societal climate we're in. This event today is effective because we come to pray, and only change can happen when our hearts are changed by a deep commitment to prayer and to the presence of God in our lives. Our change happens one day at a time, one person at a time, but God can do marvels, and we come to ask for those marvels. We come to ask for those miracles that we may change our hearts and our minds to respect, to promote the dignity of life in all of our society. And that is the Respect Life Mass at St. James Cathedral in downtown Brooklyn. And stay tuned, there's much more Currents coming up straight ahead. Coming up, prayers for life from a leading Brooklyn activist. A very small amount of our time is actually involved in politics. Our whole time is involved in the conversion of hearts. Welcome back to this special edition of Currents. I'm Matt McClure. And I'm Francesca Maxime. As we continue our coverage of Respect Life Month, we look at the different ways that pro-life advocates spread their message. Elected officials and celebrities use their bully pulpit sometimes, and grassroots activists have utilized the Internet. A group of New Yorkers, however, has found a way to take that message right to the people in one of the most unexpected places imaginable. 
a couple from New Jersey, uh, Mike and Maureen Nuzzi from Atco, New Jersey. Uh, they had the idea that they wanted to educate the public about the humanness of the unborn child in the womb. And uh, Mike is a fisherman, and he felt that uh, go where the fish are, and that is basically uh, like malls with the young people. So the Nazis negotiated with the uh, Staten Island Mall, and uh, they actually put the exhibit in the mall in a kiosk in the center hall on the first floor. And it shows the development of the baby in the womb from the eighth week to the 34th week. The right to life cause is very near and dear to the Knights of Columbus. And we all had seen the uh, gruesome videos of what an abortion is like. But when we saw this one, we said, wow, this is much more positive, um, much more uplifting. Um, you, could, you could look at it all day. You could literally stand there and look at it all day and, be, and, and wonder about this life. It's non-threatening and uh, it truly shows the developing baby, the, the toes developing, the fingers developing. And in the last slide of the presentation uh, on the DVD, it actually shows the baby smiling. It's been more than a passing glance. When people stop, they stop and they spend some time there. The day after we put it in the Staten Island Mall, we received a call at our Pregnancy Resource Center, the Crossroad uh, Foundation, and uh, the girl said, I was contemplating aborting the child, but uh, after seeing the DVD and reading the brochure, I decided to keep the child. So. I was very, very impressed by that, and it really invigorated uh, me to keep going and trying to, uh, uh, to keep it uh, at the mall. To date, we have enough money to keep it going through October. And if you'd like to uh, contribute, uh, you could always uh, make a donation and send it to uh, Project Truth in care of the Crossroad Foundation, 15 Treadwell Avenue, Staten Island, New York, and that's 10302. If uh, anybody would like to see the actual DVD, uh, you could actually see it uh, on the web. It's such a beautiful way of education. The Truth Booth there at the Staten Island Mall. The booth is a program of the organization LifeWorks Ohio. They have booths at several malls around the country. Elsewhere in New York, another pro-life ministry is celebrating its 20th anniversary. Helpers of God's Precious Infants praise and provides counsel to women outside abortion clinics. It was founded by Monsignor Philip Riley, and tonight, Monsignor Riley is our eyewitness. My name is Monsignor Riley. I'm the director of the Helpers of God's Precious Infant, which is a group, a pro-life group, that started here in the Diocese of Brooklyn. Its approach is quite different than many pro-life approaches, which are mostly political or activist. Uh, they're doing things. Uh, we are very, very small amount of our time is actually involved in politics. Our whole time is involved in the conversion of hearts. And we've, I, I have found and I observed with the people who do this, that they themselves have really grown as Christians. They themselves have grown in holiness. That uh, w the approach that we use is uh, the re realization that the, li the living risen Christ continues his work uh, through his mystical body. And the people who are giving him permission to do this, to be his instruments, are many people that you would uh, least suspect to, to be the ones that God would use to change this culture. I have many grandmothers and grandfathers I have many uh, young women and men who became, did, were never married, but have tremendous uh, goodness and potential. I have widow and widowers, so we have married people too, but we have really involved God's people, and they, they just keep growing in holiness because they're sacrificing their time 
uh, not even thinking about themselves anymore. Many, many people get involved in the helpers. They were thinking of retiring and, and, and going around traveling and all over the world. And they end up that they're traveling to abortion clinics on Saturday mornings and even during the week. And they are becoming, in their old age, uh, the, f the father and mother of incredible amounts of young babies, and they're the ones who are assisting. The help is all will tell you, almost to a man and woman, that it has been a great blessing to them, as well as to the women and to the children, that they have really found out what it means to be a Christian. A Christian is to, be, to have Christ living within you to bring Christ to the people, to sacrifice, to, to be a victim with Christ. And, and, and in the process of doing this, you start to change the world, or Jesus changes the world through you. I, I don't have to say anything. I go, I don't, teach, I don't go to give talks. I say, I go to come to teach people how to fish. I leave behind my fishing rod, my reel, and they go fishing. I go back and I see incredible fish being caught by these people all over the world. And, and they're just uh, getting bigger fish than myself. It's a tremendous, uh, the, the hand in the work of God is clear. I just try to stay out of his way. That is Monsignor Philip Riley, our eyewitness. And the next Helpers of God's Precious Infants Mass and Vigil will take place on Saturday, October 17th at St. Michael's Parish in Sunset Park, Brooklyn. Well, stay tuned. There's much more currents coming up straight ahead. Coming up next, we look at animal life. <laughs> do all dogs go to heaven? Or kitties. Uh, right, or kitties. Do all kitties go to heaven? Or rodents or whatever. <laughs> Any animal. An author tries to answer that age-old question. Well, tonight we're talking about life. And now we want to take a bit of a look at the afterlife. And not our own afterlife, but really the afterlife of man's best friend, <laughs> the dog or the cat, or the lizard, or the iguana, or whatever. <laughs> Earlier in the month, we celebrated the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi, the patron saint of animals. We did, and a lot of people went there with their pets and to have their pets blessed. It was a reminder to us of just how many people and how much people cherish animal life. I know we do, because we both have pets. Mm -hmm. and a lot of people wonder what happens to those pets after they die. Well, Father Jack Wentz, a Franciscan priest, has written a book that may have some answers. It is called, Will I See My Dog in Heaven? And we recently had a chance to catch up with Father Wentz. When I was a kid, I had a pet. The pet's name was Toppy, and it was some kind of beagle. And like many pets, they get hit by cars. And so my memory is of my brother coming home very tearful and saying how Toppy was killed in a car. And I remember days after that, expecting Toppy to come running into the backyard and back, be back home again. It was just, and which, which is a way of telling me that I was really grieving and missing this pet that meant a lot to me. What explains why I wrote the book is because I've been a, a Franciscan friar for over 50 years, and I've seen how St. Francis, uh, uh, he, he loves all creatures, he sees creatures as brothers and sisters, there's stories of St. Francis releasing Brother Rabbit from a trap or preaching to the birds, sister birds, and I've always wondered why. Why, why does Francis uh, treat all creatures as brothers and sisters? And it's because, as I concluded at some point many years ago, that's because he saw all creatures as forming one family. And so St. Francis saw all creatures along with humans who are creatures too, as, as forming one family of creation. Some people think it's frivolous. It's anything but frivolous. The title, I think, attracts people's attention. And it calls attention to the fact that uh, all of creation is created by God and all of creation is uh, redeemable by God. First of all, I don't like dogs. I've been bitten twice. <laughs> but then Father said, you know, I can be kind to them, even, you know, it's in here. <laughs> I always knew I would see my pugs in heaven and my dogs and cats in heaven, but the way he ties his book into creation and how that we all are God's creatures and that we're all beautiful is so important. And we need so much more of that in this world to see the beauty in everything and in all life. Some people argue against animals being in heaven because they're not human beings, they haven't been baptized, and only baptized people, you know, go to eternal life. 
But uh, what I say is look at this story of Adam and Eve. In the beginning before the sin of Adam and Eve, all creatures seem to be happy with God, in harmony with God. And whether they had human souls or animal souls, they, they, were, they were happy with God. Why in the next paradise that we believe in could that not happen also? After Jesus' resurrection, after his death and resurrection, uh, he tells the disciples, go out and preach the gospel to every creature. This is in Mark's gospel especially. He says, go out and preach it to every creature. And Jesus doesn't say simply preach it to the humans, but to preach it to every creature. It's a possibility that uh, animals do make it to heaven just as human beings. Are. We shouldn't automatically exclude them. What makes me worried is that maybe uh, I should have been nicer to my neighbor's dog when I was growing up. You know, and I'm able to see him in heaven if I get there, that is. So people's ideas of heaven uh, pale in comparison to what heaven's about. St. Paul says that, uh, that I has not seen nor has ear heard what God has prepared for those who love God, which is what heaven is. It's God, it's heaven is what God has prepared for those who spend their lives loving God and giving evidence, uh, palpable evidence, that they love God. I just see, uh, I just see a, you know, soul, a soul uh, and, and affection and wonderful characteristics in these animals. Uh, that makes them good companions, and both in this life and in the next, we hope and pray. Even though the title of the book is Will I See My Dog in Heaven, the subtitle of the book that you would find on the title page is God's Saving Love for the Whole Family of Creation. And that's really what the book is all about. And when we see this broader picture, it doesn't seem like such a naive question, will I see my dog in heaven? But of course, we believe that God wants all the whole family of creation to be saved and there's signs in the scripture and other places that that is his wish if we dig for it, if we look for it. And that is Father Jack Wentz in his new book. And I can't imagine I have been without Key Louisa. I know, I'm, I've got to get that book because yeah. I mean it's got, got to have so much inside. And and you were we were talking a little bit as the, as the piece was going on and um, Father Wentz is just he's just so kind he and 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 he just has that uh, that very Franciscan sort of personality about him. He does. He just seems like he's so warm and loving and um, so, you know uh, that vestment that he wears is right. you know uh, contributes to that sort of grizzly Adams like you know <laughs> sort of looking but um, obviously very much uh, uh, you know, somebody who can relate to what he said the the soul is not just uh, there's a human soul but right. then you know uh, for many people like, their animal has a soul too exactly a heart for people and a heart for animals and i can definitely relate to uh, to that because you know I, as you know i i love my my pet sophie she's doing great by yeah. the way i told you last week uh, when i was uh, saying that I, I had adopted her that i'd keep updated she's doing great she's getting used to all the city sights and sounds and all that so uh, she's she's adapting very well. Very nice. I know she's a pretty girl. She pretty is. pretty. <laughs> we'll stay tuned. There's much more currents coming up straight ahead. Coming up, these athletes are not taking their freedom for granted. Because you're not focusing on your own weakness, you're uplifting someone else for their strengths. Well, finally tonight, we wanted to spend some time with people who are making the most of life despite some extraordinary challenges. You are about to meet one woman who is helping those with disabilities realize their abilities and giving all of us something to cheer about and a cause to cheer on. It is Tuesday and Mary Bryant is in Central Park for another day of warm-ups with her running club. But it's unlike any other running club in the city. All the runners are disabled. This is the Achilles Club, taking its name from the mythical Greek hero who had just one weakness, his heel. But the members of the Achilles Club find in these gatherings not weakness, but strength. When you're out there and you're doing something for someone else, you become stronger, you become more empowered. Uh, because you're not focusing on your own weakness, you're uplifting someone else for their strengths. And that, that strengthens you. Mary has run her own surprising race through life. She grew up in Cleveland and came to New York 15 years ago to be a Ford model. 
she started running to keep her trim figure after battles with bulimia and anorexia. Soon, she felt called to fight another battle for her older brother, Don. God immediately just put this in my mind. Wait a minute, Don can't run. Don can't even walk out the door. Don was a quadriplegic, paralyzed from the neck down after an accident that snapped his spinal cord. He was confined to a wheelchair at home in Ohio. I have two legs, and that day I called him and I said, I'm going to do this for you, and I'm going to do it for me, because I can. Her plan was to run in the next New York City Marathon and to run for Don. And it was in 1994 that I did my first marathon. I had his picture on my shirt, go Mary, do it for Don. And I made two of them and I sent one to him in Cleveland. I would tell him what it was like to do these marathons and the people cheering and I said, it would be so cool if you could just be out there with me. He's like, oh yeah. But running for him wasn't enough. Mary wanted to run with him. In 1997, the two of them completed the marathon together with Don using a special chair that he controlled by moving his head. He was the first man without use of his arms or legs to do the marathon on his own strength. But imagine 25 years of having other people feed you, bathe you, dress you, brush your teeth, and sit you in a chair. And finally, he got to go out and do something on his own. After that race, Mary is now a dedicated marathoner training up to 45 miles a week. She developed a program coaching people with severe disabilities in wheelchairs called Don's Team. Mary is now vice president of Achilles International. The team competes in marathons nationwide, most recently at the Hope and Possibility 5K in Central Park. Her goals are to inspire and build confidence for the men and women who are disabled. And as much as she is guided by her own experience and determination, She's also driven by something deeper, her faith. I honestly believe God is in my heart, Jesus is in my life, and um, Mary has been more than a role model. Uh, knowing that I was named after the Virgin Mary, I've often caught myself in prayer to her, saying, you know, please let me be respectful to you and, and do the best I can, but make time for prayer because as long as we can stay focused and our foundation is straight and, and we're on the right path, everything will fall in place. Well, Mary Bryant in the Achilles Track Club there, you know, she mentioned running in the New York City Marathon and that race actually happens next month. Mm -hmm. It does. Uh, you know, looking at her and all of the people that she works with to get these runs and, and the, you know the marathon she is getting so much out of that even though she is pushing so much life into them I think right. they're pushing so much life into her uh, to inspire her by their example and their challenges that they rise to you can tell it's a very inspiring story of course uh, inspired by her brother to to do all of this and uh, you know his his story that was just amazing seeing seeing him cross the finish line there mm -hmm. Uh, that's just yeah. so inspiring. You never amazing. say you can't. You never say right. you won't. As long as there is, in this case, faith in God, you, you can. Right. Where there's a will, there's a way, as mm -hmm. they say. Well, that is all for this Respect Life edition of Carnes. Coming up tomorrow, we'll have full coverage of the Columbus Day Parade in Brooklyn. And remember, you can always watch us online. Head over to net, head over to actually currentsny.net, mm -hmm. I should say. There you can see clips of the show and check out our blog. It is called Riding the Wave. You can meet the people who make it all happen as well. Yeah, you can. And you can also follow us on Twitter for updates throughout the day. Just head over to twitter.com, twitter.com slash currentsny. Easy for you to say. Yeah. For all of us here at Currents, I'm Francesca Maxime. And I'm Matt McClure. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great night.